Hello, I'm Wendy Gimo, and I'm talking today about the basic Technique Toolbox. This is the first set in a collection of four toolboxes to go through the Music for Young Children program. Um, this is the first year of Technique Toolbox 2.0, so we're just starting, and this is in the fall, of um, this new set that we've just developed over and it's become available over the summer. Uh, so this specific one, the basic, is uh, for Sunbeams 1 and Sunshine 2 in the Music for Young Children program, basically a 4 to 6 year old. If you have a, a private student, that's the age of our NYC levels that go along with this set. So very young hands, young students, um, how do you talk about technique? Well, basic principle is in the true NYC fashion to relate it to things they know and to create a little collection of things that they can gather um, with the similarity of building a house or collecting tools for any kind of skill or game, maybe a hockey player, that they have to learn how to shoot the puck and skate and turn corners and all the little individual things that go together to make a good hockey player. Well, we have to collect and maintain a set of skills as well to create beautiful music on this instrument, to be a good piano player. So the first level then is very basic. and. Uh, I give them a binder. My students all get a binder when they first they get their first toolbox. It says My Technique Toolbox, it has their name on it. Costco binder, not um, not real expensive. It's about mm, I don't know inch at the most, maybe three quarter inch binder, and it holds all their toolboxes. So each year they just keep adding to this, and um, their compositions end up going in here. Recital programs all their little goodies and memories through the MYC program. I've typed up a list uh, of the order of presentation. So learning from the first Technique Toolboxes that we did, I think eight years ago, nine years ago, one bit of feedback from teachers was that it needed to be a little bit easier to organize and not take so much time in the classes because we're busy. We have a lot to get through. And so this hopefully will help. It's a list of all the lessons and exactly what we have to present or teach each week. That can be changed. If you want to start with that, it's available through the MYC website. But if you don't want to, if you feel like you want to change the order, that's all fine. No problem. It's just a, a suggested list. And because this is the first year with this new toolbox as well. I'm sure that we'll be changing it the order around as well. So it doesn't really matter. I've just done this as far as helping teachers to make it efficient for them. They don't have to go through it and do this. Um, I also I also put all the lesson numbers on stickies. These are actually address labels, and uh, it just says like lesson three. I'm going to give the toolbox binder and the card holder and the standing still. Then lesson five. Then lesson seven. And these are all on address labels which can go on Ziploc bags if you want to use it that way. Um, I'm finding this year that I'm just using this list because it is a lot, the actual toolbox is a lot easier to manage than in the past. So let's start with the scales and skills card. There's four elements in all the Technique toolboxes. So the scales and skills card this year, if you have used the old toolboxes, you will really appreciate that this year, the new 2.0 version, the stickers are already on the sheet. They are to be picked off and stuck on the back. So teachers don't have to cut stickers. They don't have to store them. They don't have to remember where they put them for the lesson that they need. So they're all there. So give them out in the beginning of the year, the whole sheet, or the first week that they have earned them, and then they keep them in their binder. It's their responsibility. Teachers need to purchase uh, um, page protectors to make these, uh, to, to keep them nice, right? To protect them. And the, the so called scales and skills that they learned this year are. C major, scale, right hand. So it's going to be several weeks down the road that you're going to give them their first sticker. C major, scale, left hand. 
C major bridges. So if you're an MYC teacher, you'll totally understand bridges. If you're not, um, it's basically just the outsides of the primary chords. Um, so, so a C G bridge is the outside of the one chord. C A bridge would be the four chord, and the B G bridge would be the five chord. And that's all these little guys do this year. Next year we add the middle chord to that. So we'll get more, we'll get back to that in a second. C major bridges, and then we do the, whole, the same three um, set, set of three in G major. So G major scale right hand, G major scale left hand, G major bridges, A minor at the end of the year, right hand, left hand, and bridges. So we do have to use the natural, uh, the harmonic minor, we start with the natural minor when we're first teaching it as the cousin to C, but then we have to teach the harmonic minor or 7-up when we get to um, the bridges because the dominant harmony as we know has a raised leading note, so it's the G-sharp E bridge for the dominant harmony in, the, in that set. So this doesn't look, you can't figure that out, you can see a little bit of a dinosaur here and there, but once they put it on the back, it's a really cute picture and they're excited to see it. So it's a little extra motivation to, to learn these scales and skills. Don't give these stickers or don't, don't give them permission to stick them on until they show you they can actually play it. <laughs> they've practiced it, they've played it, you know, the fingering's cracked and it's rhythmical. And then you say, you know, great job. Let's take your C major right hand sticker and you can put it on the front. We do that right in class. They don't do it at home. Okay? And then it just goes back into their binder. So that's their Scales and Skills sticker. Um, next, I'll show you, I think I'll show you this one. This is the, um, tr the since we're talking about bridges, the bridge progression card, which has all the bridges across the bottom, and the scale at the top. So in the teacher's manuals, there's lots of help and great ideas about teaching these bridges. Uh, I'm just going to say that I have it spread out over many weeks on the order of Go presentation. Um, they're colored in already on here, so you'll see that all the CG bridges are in this case blue, and all the BG bridges are orange, and, and the subdominant harmony, the CA in, in this key, are green. Now, if you have a different coloring system, then I know some teachers stick with one color through the whole program as far as the dominant harmony, tonic, and whatever, then you can just stick over this. The reason they are colored this, this time, this go-round, is just to save teachers time. Again, we don't have to actually stick these stickers on. But the, the, it, we're still able to do that if we want to. So if you have your own system that you prefer, just stick right over top of that. So at first they're only going to do the CG bridges. That's it. And they'll play this is C with the CG bridge. This is D all by itself. This is A with the CG bridge. And all the ideas again are in the teacher's manual. But this is just a record of the whole scale with all the bridges which can be used in all three keys. The, the beauty of putting it in a page protector is when they get to A minor and G major, you can write on the um, page protector the sharp, right? And because there's two keys with the sharp and, and C major without a sharp, you can actually write it on this card in permanent marker if you like for this year. And then when you use C major, you just turn it over in the page protector and you've got the blank side on the back. So this way it could be for C major, no, no black keys. And then when you turn it this way in the page protector, you're gonna, they're going to see the sharp, where the sharp comes, where the sharps come, if, you, if they need some help. But so this one card then is transposable, basically, uh, to all those three keys. Okay, bridge progression card. So next I'll, sh I'll just talk about the patterns. We start uh, this year teaching all nine patterns. They may have, we may have done this already a little bit in previous years if, if this is not their first year. But during the year they collect this set of nine pitch patterns. Pitch patterns are not only good for technique, as, as you know, um, ear training, 
sight reading. Um, they're they're very valuable element in teaching young children, beginners. So gradually through the year, I have it listed um, every however many weeks at the beginning of the year to ha um, talk about the pattern and hand out the card. So these ones, you can present the card the week that you talk about it. There's lots of pattern ideas again in your teacher's manual and in your homework pages, listening pages of the of this um, MYC students manuals. So you have all those ideas there. This is just a, a collection for them to keep and practice at home as they learn the pattern. So maybe they'll only have the first three and, and anything that they've collected so they'll just have the top line here um, and that's what they have to practice. And then as you add another one they have to practice four and then five because tools need to be kept in good working order. Right? We can't just leave them in the cupboard or in the toolbox and get rusty and old. We have to keep them in shape. So. The first three, stepping up, stepping down, and standing still, we can do right in the black keys on that fire hall at the beginning of the year. Very easy, and it's nice for them to get their hand up into the black keys anyway, so they're not hanging off the front of the piano. So that's a good way to start. And then um, this year, this new 2.0 version has the first note circled. So there's never any doubt of which way they read. This age, mo many, most probably, students are not reading yet, so they haven't all figured out that they move their eyes from left to right. So with the circle, they can see, oh, first note is at the bottom. So I have to go up, up the hill. First note's at the top, I have to go down the hill. And then the jump up high, jump down low, stepping up and down, stepping down and up. Don't just introduce it on the piano, and with all the other, you know, things in your studio, analyze for these in their, in their pieces that they're playing on the piano and also that they're singing, right? Find places that they hear that pattern in songs that they know. So it just reinforces, reinforces. You can use these cards for composing later in the year. Pick out your favorite three, um, repeat one. There's four bars of music, whatever. So really useful. Um, gradually throughout the year you add patterns so that they know them all. I think the last one comes pretty close to the beginning, like in the first definitely half a year for sure they have them all. Um, I give out these cards at the beginning of the year all nine back, backwards so they only see the back, the, the white color. So I give them this page protector and tell them the, the week that we uh, do the first one. So they'll have this, this standing still, face up. All the rest are face down. So they don't know any of the others. They're just white. I load them in the summer in the order that we're going to learn them. So I know, they don't know, I know that we're just going to go across this way. So, okay guys, it's time to turn over the next card. All right, and they already have them in their, in their toolbox, in their binder. You, I don't have to go looking for them. <laughs> Where did I put that one? How many do I need for this class? Blah, blah. It's already in their hands. So that's a good tip for organizing as well. So they get one tool card and they get two, one tool card holder, and they get two sheets of cards. So the other one goes backwards this way. Okay, so the instructions will be on the back of they're, these are called tool cards. These are the how to play the piano things. So they'll just see the instructions and they'll see blank on that side when you first give them out. They don't really know what this is about. But then as we start learning them, oh, turn over this one, turn over this one, turn over this one. Um, so that's how um, just you can save a little bit of time in your in your classes if you do that before the before you first start distributing them. Now on to the tool cards. And these are the real fun part of how to play the piano stuff that they can gather. Because uh, there are things that you can t say over and over, uh, but they don't really register if they have something that they've collected and they've put in and it's, they are assigned to work on it. It gives them actually something to do, right? You can say, keep your fingers curved. 
do this, do this, do this, do this, but it, um, this just helps to reinforce it, not only for the kids, but for the parents, because our parents are in the class, right? All right, I'll just go through this in any old order, just the order that I have here. Patterns with curved fingers. I can play my patterns, all the ones that you just saw, with curved fingers. So, not that they're going to have absolutely beautiful hand positions this year, they're really young, but the idea is there. Right? And there's all kinds of ideas in the teacher's manuals about curving fingers, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go through all that, but when um, you talk about it and they've learned all their patterns, you can give them that card. Again, these cards, they don't earn. These cards, I give the, to, the card to them when I'm telling them about the exercise or expecting them to practice it from now on, basically, right? So I can play my patterns with curved fingers. The next one is tuck, tuck my thumb in. So this is obviously very early in the year before you get to the C scale even. And just tuck my thumb in, in the right hand. And tuck my thumb in, in the left hand going down. So there is uh, some, some teachers use a little pom-pom. Put it on, for example, F. I'll go an octave higher put it on F, and when the children tuck their thumb in, they play soccer, and their thumb actually has to swoosh, kick that soccer ball out of the way. Um, kick it over, and land on F. It's quite fun. They enjoy that. And left hand same, put it on G, out at the end of the key, and then when they go down, tuck my thumb, kick it over, in, and, the, in. and they usually laugh about that. They can even play that hands together. So that's uh, basically a preface to the C major scale. Okay. O exercise. And that's just a finger kind of hand strengthening idea. So they make beautiful O's with their fingers. And don't let them go flat. Keep them nice and round. And just a little push. Not extreme. Just a nice little push with their fingers. And a beautiful O. Five finger, I can play my five finger exercise legato. So five finger exercise B both ways and legato. And so when you're teaching legato, you start maybe walking on the floor, showing that one foot down, two feet down, one picks up, one foot, next one steps. So you have two for a second, one, two. So we walk around the, the room and then we have to do that on the piano. So one finger, two fingers, one, two, and the first one lifts up, two, one, so there's a definite overlap. And if you go real slow at first, they get the idea that they have to hear that connection. This is a really cute reinforcement of that. Just um, copy a keyboard, this is the one in the back of their, teachers, of their student manuals. And if you take it to the wall, this will be my wall <laughs> right now, and you put it on the wall, they have to play that exercise there. So they're going to go stepping up so high. If they overlap their fingers, it's going to stay there. But if they don't overlap from one to two, it's going to fall. And it's like a visual reinforcement of whether they actually connected or they didn't. So just fun, they can, and that's cheap, right? You just, one photocopy, you can get two or three keyboards out of the pit. You can give it home for them to take home, and they can practice it on their wall. Well, that's kind of fun. Um, so that's another thing to go along with the legato, the idea of legato. Two-note slur. Two-note slur is going, there's, you're going to teach them something that they're going to use till their grandkids have babies, because forevermore, <laughs> in music, to making music, you need, you're going to hear and you have to play two-note slurs. So to do a two-note slur, land on the first note and float up gently off the second note. And you have to hear it connected. So if you put words to it, um, usually uh, lots of two-syllable names work with Wendy, and Wendy, Mommy, Daddy, lots. Um, that helps. Now, after they get it that way, I think it's also a good idea to teach it the other way. To there. So, today. Hello. Um, 
instead of falling away, you go towards. Because you're going to use them both ways. And that's more of like a push off rather than a float off. Two notes slur. And they can do that on the two black keys, which is our dinosaur den, as you know. Nice to maybe start with landing on finger three and then floating off finger two. Because it's the lo our longest finger. And gentle up at the beginning. Helium balloon float is to to show them that they can actually play the piano and and move their wrist up and down. They they should not play with a stiff wrist. Um, the wrist is independent of their fingers. So so what they do is they play any old note, doesn't matter, and then pretend that the helium is hooked to the their bracelet and it hit, uh, lifts up their wrist, and then you let the helium out and it goes down and up and down and up but the note doesn't come off so maybe two sets on each note one up one down up and off and then the next one so that's all that is and they can set so they do that hands together up down up down okay let's try finger two up down up down okay so that's all that is just to have just the idea started planting the seed of letting their wrist be flexible and move. Um, five finger exercise staccato. I'm not doing these in order, by the way. <laughs> five finger exercise staccato. And at this point, it's going to be probably a whole arm bounce. The forearm, right? The older they get, then they, they can have more control and do less, less movement. And the faster, the faster they play, the smaller the movement as well. But at this point, it's pretty slow, very slow. And they just bounce on every note one time each. That's pretty hard. That's the, one of the harder ones. And two hands. And they can do in whatever key they're practicing. Probably not. I don't know. You could try hands together, but probably just hands separately. And then the uh, ball squeeze. I got these balls just from the dollar store. They have a fun smiley face on them. And just to have fun, six of them, we all take it in our right hand. I broke my wrist last Christmas and I was going to physio. And they suggested maybe if I could get um, some sort of a, a ball, therapy ball or something they said. I said, are you kidding? I've been doing this for like 20 years in my studio. She says, oh my goodness, right? It helps to strengthen your hand. So that's pretty cool. So five squeezes in the right hand, five squeezes in the left hand, and four, and four, and three, three, two, two, and one big squeeze at the end. One big squeeze at the end. So ball squeeze. And again, they can do this at home if they have a ball. The uh, bubble wrap that you'll get in between some of your books when you get them shipped sometimes or you get the stuff in the mail it makes great balls for squeezing so you just wrap it in in packing tape and it's really hard to pop those bubbles like it's almost impossible so you can give them a challenge to see if they can pop the bubbles this week at home and for us it's free we just have to make that ahead of time give it to them to take home to practice if they don't have a squeezy ball at home and that again is just to start strengthening the hand. A lot of these things aren't going to make, do, they're not miracles, but they just get the idea that this is important, that we have to build these skills to play the piano well. Uh, the last one is the clothespin squeeze, and cheap, cheap clothespins is the secret. So these are dollar store plastic clothespins. I don't know that they'd even hold a sock on the clothesline, but. Um, so it's basically the O exercise on the clothespin, and they can actually see how they're squeezing. So one, two, three, four, five. That's with one and two, and then they try it with one and three. One, two, three, four, five. Other hand, right? Same, one, two, three, four, five. And then four and five, I let them play together and be a team, because fours and fives are pretty weak. And so they can play together, be a team, they line up along the clothes pen, clothes peg, and they go two, three, four, five. Don't use those tiny little ones because they flip off sideways and it's hard for them to coordinate that and they go flying around the room. So a full size clothes pin is your best bet, but plastic and just try them in the dollar store before you buy them so that the spring is really weak. 
<laughs> and they, they're perfect. And they're so cheap, it's nice to give them one to take home. Another little manipulative little thing that you can give out or, or let them play with in the studio, I should have mentioned with the two-note slur, if you have um, an eraser, or that's just happy face eraser. This is uh, that fun foam stuff. It's a turtle, but whatever you have to go on the back of their hand. When they do the two note slur and they, they lift their wrist, the whatever you have on the back of their hand should float, fall off the front of their hand, right? It comes down that way on the piano and lands on the keys. And it's just another visual little silly thing that helps them um, see what they're doing as well as feel it. I didn't mention hearing it. They need to hear how that sounds too, so make sure that you play these things for them. You know, all the, the patterns with nice legato, smooth in time and tone, even in time and tone, so that they know what they sound like and what they feel like. Maybe you could play on, on their hands, on their arms. For sure the slur, down, up. And then the kids can play their mom's arms and show mom what it feels like. And mom can play the kids' arms what it feels like. And then they go to the piano. So they, they see it. They collect something. They feel it. They hear it. And, and they do it, right? So all those go together to make to build these, these skills. Um, okay, so that's I think that's all the elements of the basic toolbox. The pattern cards, these skill cards, which are balloons. Um, the the stickers makes the dinosaur picture that are already stuck and the bridge progression card at the end of the year I've got it listed lesson 34 whenever you feel they've completed everything and done it well they get the certificate and you will um, put one sticker on the certificate the very first spot that says basic and they'll keep that certificate in their binder next year when they finish constructors you add another sticker add another sticker until they have all four stickers and they've collected the whole big package so I hope you enjoy using the basic toolbox I know it has really helped in my studio um, like I say not only the students but also the parents to know that it is important to practice these skills not just to play songs that they like and it this year we're just kind of planting the seed to um, add to and develop and improve over the years. So have fun! <laughs>